today's video, we're going to be making the A-frame, just like this. First thing I always start with is the beam. This is a 4x6 beam. Uh, this beam right here is 8 foot. It will work for a 4 foot swing, 5 foot swing. Uh, you'll need to get a longer beam, a 10 foot for the 6 foot swing. Uh, these 4x4s and 4x6s are normally used for fence posts. So they're not the most decorative uh, thing to use. This is pressure treated yellow pine. All what I do is I mark the center of the beam. Um, obviously, you measure the distance, half of that distance, and then you place a mark in the center of the beam. Then I mark the holes for the swing hangers. <clears throat> if you find out what your swing for is a four foot or a five foot. Obviously, you take half that distance, mark it, go from here and mark it. That'll be your swing hanger locations. Okay. Then the next thing I do is I take and cut this decorative end cut on here. So, um, I'll show you how I do that. This one's already done. I'm going to go ahead and do this one. As you can see, this is already marked. I forgot to tell you that. Take and mark your line all the way around it, and that's what you will cut. Set your saw to the angle, and then cut it. I drill the holes for the threaded rods swing hangers. Next we're going to lay out our notches for our 4x4s that are going to hold the beam up. Take our bevel square set to the right angle. Okay. 
Okay, so we laid out our angle, spaced them apart, and this will be where our 4x4 four four is going to go into our beam. transfer these marks onto this side of the beam with our square. Okay. We'll take our bevel square set at the right angle. And mark. Set our, set our saw to the correct depth and then cut these areas out. I cut them uh, about a quarter inch apart and just make several cuts into it. chisel, and a rasp. This is a rasp. R-A-S-P. Not used in woodworking very much these days. Knock out most of the material with the hammer and the chisel. Notice how I use the hammer like this rather than this. Because it's too easy to slip off and hit your hand. You, you, want, to, you want to keep your eyes here. You don't want to have to worry about slipping off this. So that's why I use it sideways. And you take out as much as you can with the chisel. This is a two inch wide chisel. You want to do most of the work with this. Once I get it down to about like that, we'll 
clean to clean it out with the rasp. This rasp has a flat side and a round side. Obviously, we're going to be using the flat side. Rasp take out material in one direction, this way. By dragging it back this way, you're not going to do anything but, but damage the product. There you have it. Okay. okay, now we have our beam already cut. All the cuts are made into it. All the holes are drilled. Now we're just going to round off the edges of it. Take that square edge off all the four edges of it. This is done with the exception of uh, staining it, painting it, whatever finish you want to put on it, a clear finish or something. Uh, and then uh, the swing hanger bolts. These are the swing hanger bolts I use. I'm going to try to make a uh, add these on to the where you can purchase them they're not really ready available um, you might could find them on Amazon something like that um, I have a supplier and I'm gonna link to that supplier in the uh, my website or this this uh, video will have links to that and then also we'll have a link to the plans and patterns I mean, there's no patterns on this one. It's just uh, the plans. It'll give you all the measurements, um, material list, uh, the angles that have to be cut. Um, and um, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in. Uh, what you do is you determine the bottom of the beam. This is the bottom of the beam. And you put them in like that. a nice hammer to uh, drive them in. I try to move this over a little where I could hit the flat part of it.
Then you'll uh, then put your washer and your nut on it. Uh, I always use what's called a stop nut. Uh, it prevents the nut from coming off. It's called a stop nut. So we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is going to move on to making the A-frame. Set this aside. Okay, so making these A-frames, I'm going to show you how to make uh, one of them. They're, they're all the same, with the exception of there's a right and a left, and I'll show you that when we go to assemble them. Um, the first thing I do, you have to have a compound miter saw, or you could actually cut it with a skill saw, a circular saw, if you know how to make that cut. I have a compound miter saw, so I can set the, the angle here, and plus I can set the other angle. So I'll set the angle. And then um, I always make the bottom cut first. Then we'll make our top cut. And how we get the measurement is we'll hook on the longest point of this, which is this point right here. Mark it. And then we'll do a square cut. So now we're going to lay out our top cuts that we have to make. As you can see, I've already cut the, the bottom cuts of the, the uh, post, and we're going to lay out the measurements for our top cuts. The way I do that is I put them, as it's going to be put together, I'll lay them on the sawhorses with the long points out on each end. That way I know how to make my top cut marks. And we'll uh, mark it. Making our two marks there, and then we'll intersect it. Like that. Okay. As you can see, the thin side on this one is on the outside. So we want to do the opposite on this. We want to have our, our thin side over here. And we'll do the same thing.
And these are the pieces that we're going to cut out. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll transfer these lines onto the other side. Okay, so now they're both ready to be cut. Take our saw, circular saw, and what I like to do is set it at just a little bit over half the thickness of this 4x4. Um, seems to work out, it gives you a better cut if you do it that way. Okay, now these are actually done, and we're going to do the same thing we did with the beams. We're going to round all the edges of the posts. That's that. Now we're going to, uh, we have six more pieces to go to this. We're going to make our pieces out of these two by fours. Um, you'll have one long one. You have one long one to go down on the bottom, and then you'll have two short ones, pieces, to go at the top. Okay? I'll show you how to make those. Obviously you don't want to use something like that. It's not very pretty. Okay, this looks pretty good. Set our saw to the angle we need. And cut. And then uh, 
your measurement will be taken from the long point to the long point. Two long pieces that you need for one for each side. And we're going to make our short pieces. Same thing, you measure from the long point to the long point. Let's see which kind we got here. These are the two longest ones out of the smallest ones we got. We have two long ones, two short ones. Okay, so we'll mark this. have a pattern to cut the other one with. Grab this. pieces are cut. Now we want to pre-drill them like this. Okay. Every one of these, every one of these piece, these two by four pieces will have the same location where this hole is. Pull a measurement from here to there and from here to there. Or it could be from here to there. What it is is the center of this two by four. Okay. So we'll set our square to get that measurement, marking it on the outside of the tree. I always put the outside portion of the tree, with these are growth rings, the outside of the tree goes out. So that's what we're going to be marking. Mark it like that and like that. Boom. Bam. Simple as that. Okay. The same with this and that. Okay. All right, now we're going to get our lag screws out. Okay. This is what we're going to be using to assemble it with. What I do is I recess that so the bolt won't be sticking out when you go to put it in. Um, it looks better. It actually holds it better. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, we have our paddle bit for that. Obviously that's our, how deep we want to go. You're going to have a washer in there too so you want to go that deep plus a little bit for your washer. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I know that's deep enough. Well, I've been doing them so long, I can tell by looking. Okay. 
Oh, we didn't mark that one. Next, what we're going to do is pre-drill it a hole completely through. And I'm using a quarter inch paddle bit. Put this on high. Okay, now that everything's pre-drilled and cut, what we're going to do is the same thing we did with the rest of the frame. We're going to round all the edges of these. I'm using my, my uh, router table for that with the round over bit in it. Assemble the A-frame. I have this piece of wood cut especially for that. It's the exact distance that we want in between here at the top. Um, so I'm going to try to keep it in place with this clamp. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. But put this in here. You want this flush with that. I want this edge flush with that, just like that. Okay, now we'll go down here, we'll make sure this is the correct distance apart. Okay, and the first board we'll put on is this board right here. Take our measurement.
And that'll be our top of our board. Just like that. Okay. And while, while I'm speaking about laying this out, you have to notice the long point of each post is on the outside of each post. This is the longest point. That's what we're starting on first. Okay, then I have this corner bit set to the right depth. Uh, we'll center this on here. We got it on our mark. And we'll just drill holes just enough to penetrate the, the uh, post. And that's it. Now we'll drill all the way to the depth for that. Okay. Um, and I use these lag screws. You could use a through bolt with a nut and bolt or a nut and washer on one side. You go all the way through the timber if you'd like. I mean, that's an option. Um, I particularly like these, so that's why I use them. Okay. So now I'm going to pre-drill this a little wider to accept the shank, the thick shank on that. That's that. Now we're ready to assemble it. Our washers are already inside that, so it's just a matter of putting the lag screws in. Alright, now we're going to put our, our large piece on the bottom. Measuring from there to here, making sure this measurement is the same as this measurement. Okay, so that's where that goes. Same thing we did with that, we're going to do with this.
Okay, that's it. Now we gotta just flip it over and put our remaining piece on. Now, you see how I just did that? I got the correct angle, the, the, the angles, the beam's going to be sitting in here, and I put it on the timber like that. You could do it like that, or on the, on the plans, it tells you how, to, how far to measure to, from the bottom of the post to here. I like using this method. It's a little bit more accurate. Okay, same thing as we did with the rest of those. I'm going to do with this. Basically do that, repeat that, and you'll have your other A-frame done. And that's it, the A-frame will be completed. Okay, so now we're gonna put the A-frame together. And uh, it's not very hard at all. Um, just take your beam, lay it, lay, lay everything, something similar to this. Pick it up, put it in like that. So I got that right about even with the notch. I mean, you could use two people to do this, but I've been used to doing this by myself, so I know how to do it by myself. It's a whole lot easier with two people, but. That's it.